Hey everyone, Public here, and in today's video I want to talk to you about crafting gear on your Shadow Priest and things to consider as you use your Sparks of Creation just to help your character progress, um, all that kind of stuff. There are a lot of different perspectives on this, and I'll kind of do my best to show you all the options when it comes to crafting gear and talk about the choice that I'm making specifically, and hopefully it'll help you make your choice on what gear you're going to be looking to craft, if at all, honestly. I mean, you could go the entire expansion and not craft any gear if you want. This is really just for those of you that want to push your character faster or a little bit further um, than you would otherwise. So let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, so if this is your first video talking about the crafting system inside of Dragonflight, I wanted to start off just with a brief overview of, of how this all works. It's probably really overwhelming to a lot of you, even if you're a veteran of World of Warcraft, which is totally understandable. Uh, the, the TLDR here is that by using your soulbound materials that your character has, you can submit a crafting order for a crafter to use those mats to make you a 418, up to a 418 piece of gear. Uh, and that's effectively how this works. You can't buy these items on the auction house necessarily because they're all soulbound. Uh, so the only way to do it is through the crafting system. Uh, so the, the trick to these is that some of the resources made, specifically those soulbound resources, are relatively finite, meaning you can't farm them. There's only a select few of them in the game. Um, as the patch goes on, as the season goes on, that becomes less and less true. Uh, but especially earlier on, you know, these, these resources are going to be somewhat sparse. Um, and, and really, it's just kind of a question of like, how much money do you want to spend? Uh, so in, in addition to the actual 418 piece of gear, which for the most part, every single slot has some kind of option for crafting. So you can, you know, if you wanted to, you could craft an entire set of profession gear uh, on every single slot of your gear, pretty much. Uh, the, the reason you don't want to do that or that you can't do that specifically is because one, 418 gear is not the tip top item level for season one. Uh, the, the vault can drop up to 422 gear, and I think the raid goes all the way up to 424 um, in Mythic. So there is quite a bit of gap there. Uh, the other big thing is profession gear has something called embellishments. So there's effectively another layer added on top of this. So you have your full profession crafted gear, but if you craft something that's an embellished piece of gear, or becomes embellished, then you can only have two of those equipped at a time. So for, for, for a lot of people, we're kind of targeting these embellished pieces of gear because typically when something's embellished, it's giving you more DPS than it would otherwise, which is why they've capped it at two. Uh, this is pretty much reserved for things that have kind of a special effect on it. Um, so what this means is you can't, while you can have an entire set of 418 crafted gear, you cannot have an entire set of 418 embellished crafted gear. You can only have two out of those pieces being embellished. Uh, so we are a bit of limited on this, you know, from, from that perspective as well. Um, and the way that we actually craft and buy these is with uh, the primary resource is Spark of Ingenuity. This is the thing that's somewhat time-gated right now. You should have gotten one the first week of the expansion or when you finish that end campaign. Um, as this video comes out, you should have gotten your second one uh, with week three of the expansion. And then I think you'll get a couple more basically every two weeks. At some point, this map will become farmable, but not quite yet. Or not farmable, but you'll see it more often, I think. Uh, but for now, this is kind of the biggest limiting factor because you need these sparks to make gear. So if you're watching this video and you've done everything up to this point that you should have done campaign-wise, you should have two sparks that you can use, meaning you can craft two pieces of crafted gear. Now, those crafted pieces of gear could be embellished. They don't need to be, though, but they probably should be uh, because the embellished pieces are giving you, you know, more eye level, or not more eye level, sorry, more damage and more throughput. The other resources, when you're crafting gear, you can slot in an extra item to bump its eye level up. So by default, all of these crafted profession gear can go up to... Uh, I believe all like these purple, the epic, the spark gear goes up to 392, um, which is uh, around normal raid level gear, basically. Now, you can upgrade that with the optional region called primal infusions. Um, there's also concentrated primal infusions, which these increase the difficulty of crafting those, those things, um, but give you more eye level instead. Uh, and this is kind of where it comes into play. You kind of want to find or, you know, either a guild crafter or something like that that does have a lot of skill. And they've really specialized in this because as you increase item level, it becomes harder to craft that piece of gear 
to get the tip top item level. So all these things have kind of a range where you can say, yeah, right now the highest you can craft an Epic without the primal infusion is 392. But if you're just like a basic crafter, you've invested no points into something, it's only going to be 382. And that's the kind of range that you're dealing with. Primal infusion, same thing. So if you have nothing, uh, no primal infusion, the highest you can get is 392. With a primal infusion, a regular one, you can go up to 405. There's that little range there. Um, or a concentrated primal infusion goes all the way up to 418. And that's kind of the tip top here. Um, primal infusions, you, you can get that from basically doing activities in season one, especially the high end activities. Uh, the big ones are going to be raid, mythic plus, and some stuff at the end of like your renowned track inside of reputations. Um, now, the other thing to understand here is recrafting. So you can, in addition to submitting crafting orders, you can submit recrafting orders. So these are kind of a, a special part of the crafting system that allows you to recraft a profession item that either you made or had someone make for you with different optional reagents, right? So this means if you want to change the secondary stats on a piece, you can use a, a recrafting order. Or if you want to upgrade an item that you've already made, you can do that as well. You can't like change out the slot or make it a different piece or things like that, but you can change item level and kind of other optional effects like the embellished slots, things like that. Uh, so for example, if you craft a 392 necklace, um, you can recraft it later with your primal infusion that you get to make it up to a 405 necklace, or if it's a concentrated primal infusion, 418 necklace. Or let's say you craft you know, a tailoring waist with the blue silken lining embellishment, you can recraft that with a different embellishment, say the in, the double potion duration embellishment instead. Um, it does cost some amount of mats to do that, but, but that is another option as well. So you're not totally stuck with the piece that you've crafted, um, which is important because again, sparks that we were talking about before are kind of a finite resource. So you do want to kind of get the most bang for your buck early on that. And the final thing I want to kind of iterate again, I mentioned it earlier, is you want to keep in mind crafting quality. So the, the quality of an item directly correlates to the eye level of the amount of stats you're getting of that piece. So you really want to find, you know, a crafter that's really dedicated into whatever the thing is that you want to make. Um, so say you want tailoring boots, for example. You want to find a tailor that's really specialized into making boots as efficiently as possible. That way you get the most eye level for your mats. Um, and, and doing so also requires you using the most high quality mats as well to help guarantee a higher quality. Now, again, this is why I would strongly suggest to find friends, use trade chat, use your guild members if you if you have a, an active guild, right? To find someone to make that's really specialized in that. So for example, like my priest is specializing in making tailoring chests and legs. And my alt is a jewel crafter is really specializing in making necks. Um, and those are kind of the three items that I'm really kind of, you know, zoning in on that I can help myself and my raid team or anyone else that wants me to make them for them. So you kind of want to find that person in your guild or elsewhere um, that, that can do that. That way you're getting the most out of your money and the most out of your mats. Um, okay. So that's the basics of the crafting system out of the way. This is really, really high level. If you want more in depth, um, Wowhead, Icy Veins, whatever, there are plenty of guides out there. But this is just the kind of surface level information that I think you need to know. So let's move on to your crafting options as a Shadow Priest. Okay, so as a Shadow Priest, uh, you know anyone, you have quite a lot of options of, of gear to craft uh, for you, especially you know the 418 pieces that you're targeting. So like I mentioned, every single slot has some amount of craftable item that you can make in there. Um, you know. And, and almost every profession has something that we could use as a Shadow Priest. Now, uh, the important thing that I want to cover in this video is the kind of first couple pieces that you want to craft, specifically the pieces with embellished effects on them. These are the ones that you really want to target because more or less they're giving you more bang for your buck, basically. Uh, you know, we have a kind of a finite amount of our Sparks of Ingenuity, especially the upgrade tokens as we get into, you know, really starting Season 1. Uh, so kind of choosing what you want to craft, I would highly suggest aiming your, your resources at embellished items first. Um, and again, just because everything is so finite. So I have this funny little tier set, so I'm going to go over and I'm only doing this because I think it, it's, it, it, it explains things in a better way than I could otherwise of kind of how you're thinking about crafting pieces of gear. Uh, Okay, so starting off first, um, I'm going to put the Jewel Crafting Neck at S tier. So this is the Elemental Lariat Jewel Crafting Neck. Um, 
the reason why this is so high up there is a, is a couple reasons. One, uh, as an embellished neck, there is a proc for this that does it's doing performing pretty well, um, and you can add up to three sockets on a neck piece. Uh, it comes with one by default, and there's a jewel crafting item that you can buy to add two extra sockets. Um, and again, this is usable by anyone. You don't need to be a jewel crafter to use anything on this sheet, or, or sorry, you don't need to be the profession to use any of these items. So. Even if you're a non-jewel crafter, you can use this neck. It's performing really well. Uh, for a lot of people, this is what I would aim to craft first, uh, just to give you know a really high stat, um, optimal statted neck uh, with three sockets and a proc on top of that, and it's taking up one embellished slot and one spark. So it's kind of the best of of all your of of, of everything right now. So this is kind of what I would deem S tier, uh, more or less, that I would consider crafting uh, likely first. Um, Okay, so next up uh, in in kind of the the A tier, are things I would consider for make your second or third pieces. The first thing I'll put up here is blue silken lining. Um, and while I'm doing this as well, I will show you the kind of the sim chart, which is linked down below if you haven't seen this. Uh, so with crafted gear, you're seeing blue silken lining is all the way up here. Just this embellishment effect itself is 1.2% DPS. Now the trick with this guy is you get this benefit while you're above 90% health. And then you gain mastery. Obviously, on progression, this might not be 100% uptime, right? O obviously, this is going to have some fluctuations depending on how much damage is happening in that fight. Um, taking things like the mental fortitude talent in our spec tree can somewhat counteract this because basically you want to stay as healthy as possible, right? Don't don't stand in the fire. Um, but if, even that being said, you know you can adjust uptime here. Um, it's still a very very good option. You can see this is elemental lariat right below it. Um, so blue silken lining is what I would deem the kind of a tier. Um, it, it has some downsides because of that, the health requirement here. Um, but again, it's just one embellished slot, which is really nice. You can put this on just about anything you want. Um, I believe it works on weapons, you know, uh, it works on like tailoring made pieces, that kind of thing. So you can put this on a back piece, um, a waist, you know, wrist, that kind of thing. You can see here, I'm, I'm actually simming a bunch of different tailoring pieces without they're just using haste master right now. It's not obvious. It's the tooltips aren't the best, but um, so you can see, like right now, uh, and this is all compared against mythic best in the slot gear. So you can see from up here. Um, so right, the the tailoring four eighteen cloak is a zero point zero three percent DPS loss from the mythic best in slot cloak uh, from the raid. Um, but if you if you counter that, you know. Blue silken lining is 1.19% DPS increase, meaning you know you're you're a net DPS increase basically is how you would look at that. Um, obviously, the exact, the exact slot to craft this on is highly dependent on the gear that you have, but you know if you put this on something that's like cloak, waist, wrists, or even legs, um, which is our worst tier piece, uh, feet is another good option as well. You can get some good value out of this. So I, I would kind of for your, for you know a tier that's why I put this here. Okay, third one. I'm breaking my rule. This is the only time I'm breaking my rule. Um, I'm putting the engineering wrists here at A tier. Um, the engineering wrists are very special. Um, the reason why I'm putting them here, if you didn't know, you can an engineer can craft you wrists as a, as a cloth and a non-engineer, and you can socket in engineering res as the, the effect on those wrists. Um, which is pretty, pretty, pretty cool. It's, it's not as uh, reliable as an actual engineer using it, but this means um, as a non-engineer, you can still get engineering res on your priest. The reason why I'm putting this here is specifically because of Mythic Plus. If you're looking to bring something extra to your group, you can actually have Elemental Lariat, an item with blue silken lining, and the engineering res. It doesn't take up an embellished slot. But I wanted to put this on the list. It does still require a spark to craft this, um, but it is something I would consider crafting you know, maybe your third, fourth piece um, as a Shadow Priest, if specifically you're you're looking to doing quite a lot of Mythic Plus. Because uh, even like sometimes getting a, getting an extra battle res out there is, is pretty nice, if, if no one else in your group can do it, especially. Um, it's kind of It was kind of a, an offshoot answer, but, you know, <laughs> there's that. Um, okay, so now let's kind of go into uh, the stuff that is an option, but probably not for a lot of people. Um and this guy is, you know, there's a lot of things here. So the first one in, in B tier, this is um, uh, the uh, the potion one. So there there isn't an extra embellishment here. Let me pull this up, my my notes here. Um, uh, 
Okay, the first one in B tier is the Potion Absorbent Inhibitor. Uh, this is another embellishment, very similar to Blue Silk and Lining, can be applied on just about any piece of gear that doubles uh, the duration of the combat potion. Um, I don't think this thing is the greatest, although it is going to be naturally more consistent than Blue Silk and Lining. Uh, the problem, the biggest problem with this guy is potions are very expensive to make right now. So because of that reason, Getting value on this is going to be quite challenging, especially if you're not using the best potion right now, um, which is why I'm going to put this guy at B tier. It's very possible things could tweak as you get further down the line, um, but you know, as we get more comfortable with fights, blue silk and lining will also get better, which is why I put this at B tier. Like, it's fine, um, but probably not the thing I would look at. So there's that. Um, okay, next up on this list, um, we have... The offhand from Leatherworking, of all things, which I just found out about uh, the other day. It's called the Wither Rot Tome. Uh, this guy is basically just a damage and slow proc. It's fine um, if that's something you want to craft. Uh, it was doing decently well in single target, but multi-target was kind of sputtering out. Uh, the trick here is you just need a good off, a good main hand to use with this. Uh, so depending on you know how lucky you are with weapons, this could be kind of awkward. But again, might be something to consider if you get really lucky. You get like a, a really big like main hand from Raid, but you don't have an offhand to pair it with. Maybe you want to craft an offhand instead. This is an embellished offhand to give you an effect like that. Uh, you can't edit the stats on this as far as I'm aware, but the stats are decent. Um, so yeah, something to consider on that slot. Uh, next up, we have the Hood of Surging Time. This is a tailoring cloth crafted helmet that gives you... Uh, a haste proc every time you hit an enemy for the first time. Very similar to the first strike soulbind trait in Shadowlands, if you played that, uh, from, from that soulbind. Um, it, this guy is interesting is that it's a haste proc, and it stacks up to five times. It can be quite powerful in Mythic Plus for that reason, um, especially in this kind of interim, you know, part where you don't quite have all your tier gear yet. Obviously, it is a helm-crafted piece, Um and the stats are not controllable. So, you know, you're kind of, you know, playing the game a little bit. And unfortunately for this item, uh, the tier helmet has our best stats. Uh, so you're kind of, you're losing quite a lot. Tier helmet also has more item level. Um, so I, I think this is a really good, like, mid-season item. But it, it's not going to be best in slot. Uh, which is why I wouldn't really suggest crafting it first. Unless you really want that kind of immediate power gain. Um, but it seems to be doing pretty well, all things considered. Uh, okay, next up on the list is the uh, Crafted Shoulders. Uh, these are the Amis of the Blue. It's basically just a proc-based shoulder. It's actually doing decently well in single target. Again, counts as an embellishment. Um, probably not something I would use over Blue Silk and Lining, but might be more consistent if that's what you're looking for. But AoE value kind of drops off after that. So, there you go. Um, the last thing I want to put here in B tier is the Crafted Inscription Staff, which is the Illuminating Pillar of the Isles. This is just a regular staff, has no embellishments added. You can add blue silken lining or a few other embellishments to this, um, but it costs two sparks to make this. So it's a little expensive to craft in the sense that right now you could get an Elemental Lariat piece, which is the JC necklace, and like a tailoring belt with blue silken lining as with your two sparks. Or you could craft one staff. So that's where the value is kind of offset a little bit. If you're really weapon starved, like you've done like 20 Mythic Plus this week, you've full cleared the raid on normal and the heroic, whatever it is, and you still haven't gotten a weapon, you know, maybe you're like, okay, I, I really need a weapon. I'm just going to craft one. This is probably what I would go for if you're kind of in that spot. But I'd say if you get any kind of weapon from normal or heroic, especially if it's a two-hander, would probably advise against this. Um, but it is there if you want it. And like I said, you can put blue silk and lining on it. It's just going to delay that second embellished piece um, till you get your next spark in two weeks or whenever you're watching this video. Um, now, while we're talking about weapons, I do want to note um, there is this guy, which is the bronze grip wrappings uh, embellishment effect that you can apply to weapons. This guy is currently bugged, or just needs more testing. It's uh, it's not quite working the way that we expected, um, and after doing further testing, it's just very inconsistent depending on your class and spec. Uh, for right now, I would avoid using it. If it turns out it's good, you can always recraft it into a weapon later if you decide to craft uh, a weapon, because it's only you can only put this on a weapon. Um, but for now, I would avoid this. Um, just look out for updates in the in the, sh the priest discord. 
if you're curious on how this thing performs in the future. Um, and then to kind of wrap up everything, so so let's talk about uh, D tier and kind of other things. Um, the first thing I'll say, I need to add another tier here, so add row below. Um, <laughs> okay, this one's gonna be called Do Not Craft. <laughs> Uh, and I'm going to change this to gray. Okay. So I want to, as a PSA, there is another inscription staff called the weathered explorer staff. Um, it has less stats added on it and has a haste proc. This thing is terrible. Um, you can see it down here. <laughs> it is a significant DPS loss over base and it's significantly underperforming for its item level. Uh, do not craft the staff, uh, PSA over, <laughs> um, Okay, the rest of this video is going to be pretty short. This is our C tier. So um, these are, are referencing specifically our, our set bonuses. So with tailoring, there are two sets, the Azure Reef set and the Chrono Cloth set. Um, these guys are average. They're average at best. So if we're looking at single target, you see Azure Weave Mantle and Azure Weave Slippers here at 418 are a 0.76% DPS increase over Mythic Best and Slot Gear. Now on the surface, you're like, okay, 0.76, that's that's fine. It's something. It's more than the potion guy, right? Um, the problem with this is this is costing you two sparks because it's two pieces of gear and each piece of gear counts as being embellished. So you can't have the Azure Reef set bonus and an elemental lariat or an Azure Reef set bonus and a blue silk and lining crafted piece. If you're using the Azure Reef or Chrono Weave sets, that's all embellished pieces that you get. Um, which inherently is, is what makes this not ideal and why I put it in C tier. It's probably honestly in this kind of do not craft zone more if I'm being, you know, realistic just because of, you know, it's counting for two embellished slots and really giving you less across the board. Um, obviously, you know, if you're looking at like proc to proc, it could be more consistent, but overall, I think there are just better options to consider if you want to pull from B, A or S tier than using these sets. Um, Chrono Weave appears to be just really under value. Um, you can see it is, it's something. Um, but yeah, the procs overall seem underwhelming. I just put these in SimC a couple days ago as of releasing this video. Everything seems to be working correctly after I did that, but they're just not doing super well. So there you go. Um, the last thing I'll put in C tier. And again, this one, I don't know. You can kind of move this around. Um, this is the allied risk guards of time dilation. Uh, it's basically just a verse proc for yourself and, and allies. Um, you can see it is right up here. So your spells and abilities have a chance to rally you and your four closest allies, uh, giving all of you guys versatility. Um, the only reason I put this here, it, you know, obviously it's kind of a decrease here in single target, um, depending on like multi-target stuff that you're going on. You know, you might see this doing a little bit better. Um, let's, okay, it gets a little bit better in multi-target. Um, but it does give kind of group benefit here. So, which is not being added to the sim. So if you factor in the group benefit on this piece, it could actually, it is doing better than it will sim, which is why I put it C tier. Like it's fine. Um, probably not worth crafting, but you know, it's there as an option if you want it. Um, okay, so hopefully that explains kind of the, the thought process of how to approach this gear. Um, Obviously, I didn't go in-depth on how every single thing works. There are things missing from this. If it's missing from this, I either A, don't care about it because it's really bad, or it needs more testing, and I just haven't had time to get to it yet. So if you're looking for the most up-to-date stuff, check either my Icy Veins guide or the Special Gear Sims page if you want to kind of look at the raw data yourself um, and, and kind of make the decision for you. Okay, so that is kind of the, the tier list of crafted gear for a Shadow Priest. Let's talk about the decision that I'm making. Okay, I've had to record this a couple of times, so enjoy the change of lighting. Uh, but let's talk about, you know, my choice in crafting, just to give you some insight on the decision that I'm making. So I think, you know, to recap, there's basically two schools of thoughts here. You can chase for your best in slot item and craft that early and then upgrade it as you get the upgrade mats. That's kind of school of thought one. School of thought two is to basically just craft whatever's the biggest upgrade for your character right this second. Obviously that camp has the potential to get much higher DPS gains in the short term, but long term you might have to craft or recraft more things to get to that end goal. So it's kind of up to you and really how much gold, money, time, effort you want to spend on this. Um, I'm leaning much more into camp one with my gearing decision. Uh, you know, doesn't mean you have to follow what I did, uh, but this is kind of what my current thinking is. So 
it's it seems like um you know elemental lariat is kind of the the big thing to chase so that's you know to me gonna be the main thing that i'm gonna get so i'm gonna craft that pretty early on uh, i have my jewel crafter kind of ready and set up so i'm gonna get that at 392 uh as soon as i can really um now obviously i already have a 389 neck from farming uh sibelian rep uh, it doesn't have great stats though, and I, I am still getting a pretty solid upgrade from going from this to a 392 necklace. I get the embellishment, I get the proc, and I get uh, extra sockets as well. So it just kind of is a win-win for me. Now, obviously, you know that's you know kind of up to you and where you're at. It might be a bigger upgrade for you or not. Um, and and again, I can put ideal stats on it, which is great. Uh, there there will be better uh, next that will drop in Mythic Plus in the raid, etc. But you know, they won't have the proc, <laughs> so they will be slightly worse. So that's what I'm going to do first. That's kind of, for more or less for me, that's pretty set in stone of what I want to do. After that, everything is really up in the air. So my initial bet is I want to craft my second piece, something with blue silk and lining from tailoring. So what that looks like, I guess I'm a tailor, so I'm going to show you that real quick. You know, crafting anything in this vibrant wilder cloth area is really kind of where I want to sit. Um, now, obviously... You know, I don't have everything here, so I might have to go to crafting orders if I want something else. Um, I'm primarily looking at non-tier slots. So not helm, shoulders, chest, gloves, or legs. You kind of want to avoid that. That way you can get your two and four set as fast as possible. Uh, so what I will probably end up doing after a full week of doing Mythic Plus and after doing the raid on Normal and Heroic and maybe a bit of Mythic, uh, I'm just going to see what my lowest slot is um, and see what I still have. Uh, I'm going to kind of gravitate towards things like my boots, gloves, waist, or wrist. Those are kind of my top options, not in any particular order. Uh, could also do legs if I want to. Uh, the only reason I'm thinking legs is the actual leg <laughs> tier piece from the raid has, uh, I think it's crit verse stats, if I believe. So pretty bad stats. Um, but obviously, you know, I would take four set over <laughs> not having four set, right? So, and I'm probably going to put blue silk and lining on them. And that's, that's my current thinking. Um, and I'll be probably my second item. Now for my third item, I will probably go third right to the engineering wrists. Um, so that's right. You know, search cloth, uh, go down here, search wrists, the over-engineered sleeve extenders. It's probably gonna be my third pick. It, it has less secondary stats than you'll typically find. I think, uh, to some extent, or maybe it's just one stat. Um, so I'll probably craft this with haste and then get it the, the tinker slot, um, uh, you know, and, and, and it'll be a primarily a B res wrist item. And I'm going to use this whenever I do mythic plus, this is probably going to be the third thing I use. So my third spark, I will probably use on this because I really enjoy doing keys with my friends. And I think this is a really powerful item for that. Um, and really that's the kind of end of my plan. Um, I'm going to kind of see where it goes. Um, you know, from there, it's really kind of up in the air as far as where final tuning ends up. Do they fix bugs uh, with certain embellishments, kind of where things line up? Maybe I do alternate slots, but that's kind of my initial gearing path with crafted gear. So hopefully, uh, the you know what I'm doing gives you some you know insight into how to make that same decision for yourself. Um, so yeah, good luck with that, and let me know what you decide down below. I'm curious. There isn't, I think, like one right answer here. I think there are several different ways to go about this. So curious to see what you guys would decide to do. So. But that will wrap up this video on uh, crafting items. So hopefully you've gotten some more uh, knowledge on what to do and you have a bit more confidence as far as what you want to do for your Shadow Priest. Obviously, this advice is somewhat generic to all ranged DPS casters. Um, I'm only really speaking for Shadow in terms of what I know is good and bad, but obviously you can take and extrapolate some of that data out, right? Um, but yeah, big thanks to everyone that's watched this. Uh, big thank you to all the YouTube members and Patreon guys and everyone supporting me on Twitch and elsewhere means a lot to me guys. Um, if you want to see more videos from me, I will be doing some soon, uh, post season one launch. Um, I'm, I'll be honest. I don't know if we'll get many videos out before the holidays. Um, but I do plan on doing a lot just for like generic raid mythic plus, et cetera guide. So those will come out at some point, although it might be after the holidays. So that's all I have for this video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.